All right, it is the WMAY Morning News Feed. I'm Greg Bishop, and uh, we're hoping to connect with Attorney Thomas DeVore here in a bit uh, to discuss the case that he brought on behalf of 90 school staff and teachers uh, against 22 different school districts. And uh, we'll connect with him hopefully here soon uh, to discuss what the implications are here because you've got uh, other lawsuits that he's filed on behalf of parents uh, targeting school districts that are uh, essentially uh, not being given due process when it comes to their kids uh, and mask mandates or even exclusion from school. Uh, and you're seeing some of the uh, the exclusion from school things that are happening even here locally uh, with Tri-City Schools uh, just by Mechanicsburg and Buffalo. Uh, they've actually determined that uh, starting today, they're going uh, into what is uh, called an adaptive pause. And uh, some people haven't heard of the adaptive pause, but it's something that the Illinois State Board of Education lays out that's allowable if it's in consultation with local health authorities. So Tri-City Schools, a smaller school district in the area, but uh, they're seeing uh, an increased number of COVID-19 cases. Uh, and it's something that uh, is leading to that school district uh, to ultimately go into this adaptive pause period uh, where they're scheduled to now come back, hopefully, they say, uh, by January 10th. That includes uh, the suspension of some extracurricular activities. Now, um, the Illinois State Board of Education has laid out on their sites that uh, school districts can go into an adaptive pause uh, in consultation with local health authorities. So if uh, the school district sees, okay, we've got an increased number of COVID-19 cases, Uh, and then you have uh, that consultation with the local health authorities, then they can make that decision to do an adaptive pause. I did not see any delineation of if there's a specific timeline that schools are allowed to keep students from having in-person education um, out of concern of spreading COVID-19. So it it, it could give uh, school districts in consultation with local health authorities uh, the ability to, to close school for however long they they determine uh, is is necessary. Uh, But uh, one thing that's interesting, too, is I can't get an actual number of how many school districts are actually going into an adaptive pause across the state because ISB does not track that data. The State Board of Education does not track that data. They track school districts that aren't doing mask mandates, and they have a list of those school districts that have uh, been placed on uh, some kind of uh, probation for not having following the mask mandate. So they can track that, but they're not tracking the number of schools that are doing this adaptive pause. Uh, so you can see where some of the concerns from parents are, where they want their kids to be in school. If their kids aren't in school, uh, number one, they're not getting a quality education in person. Number two, it causes some child care issues for the parents who may be working. Uh, so it's a, it's an issue that uh, I think is is something that needs to be addressed um, and, and something that uh, I don't know if it's uh, a matter of doing a hybrid where people who want to come into school can or, you know, if, if students don't want to come into school and they, they're allowed to take part in an adaptive pause uh, and what do you do with teachers and their concerns and so on. So um, it's one of those things where we have to consider what exactly is going on here. Uh, So the exclusion uh, of students having in-person school happening in Tri-City, but again, I can't get an exact number of all the schools statewide that are uh, doing an adaptive pause as is being done in Tri-City today. Uh, I hope that we have now uh, attorney Thomas DeVore on the phone. Uh, Tom, is that you? It is, sir. All right, fantastic. Thanks for uh, thanks for getting back with me now here on the WMAY Morning News Feed at 645. So we were just talking about uh, some of your other lawsuits that were targeting exclusion policies, that were targeting uh, mask policies without having a proper quarantine order that includes due process. So that's one set of lawsuits you have on behalf of uh, a large number of parents, 700-plus parents, Uh, part of that lawsuit against 140 different schools. This week, you have a different lawsuit that impacts schools, 22 school districts across the state being sued, including several here in central Illinois, Springfield District 186 being one of them, with teachers and school staff suing. What's going on here with this case, Tom? Well, I mean, it all lies under the Department of Public Health Act as well. It's even a clearer case to me than the issue of the the exclusion from school and and the math is pretty clear. But as to vaccination and testing, 
Greg, there are specific provisions in the Department of Public Health Act for both of those that says that only the Department of Health has the authority to require or seek to require a citizen to vaccinate or test. And it explicitly provides, if you read the statute, that a citizen can refuse to be vaccinated or they can refuse to be tested when the purpose is to limit the spread of an infectious disease. And if they refuse and they have the right to do so, the only remedy for the Department of Health is to potentially seek a quarantine or an isolation order against that citizen if they can prove to the court that the person is a public health risk. That's the law. It's crystal clear. It's not remotely ambiguous. And yet you have all these policies and mandates and stuff trying to coerce people in the most extraordinary ways to get them to do these things, threatening people's financial livelihood if they don't comply. And the law doesn't allow it. It's absolutely ridiculous. So what we have here is, uh, of course, the vaccine mandate from the governor, and he's part of this lawsuit that you filed. Uh, Also, you're suing not just the school districts, but the Illinois State Board of Education and the Illinois Department of Public Health. Uh, you got the vaccine mandate that does allow for testing, but uh, one of your clients in this case from Springfield, a teacher, Kimberly uh, Smoots, she shared with the school board back in uh, October that uh, she's got uh, legitimate concerns, that uh, she's not going to get the vaccine. She's going to comply with the testing, but back in October, she said that uh, she's worried about a slippery slope. I want to share this, uh, this clip here. First, we must test. Then you take away the option to test and make us get the vaccine. Next, that's not enough. And we must get a booster according to your schedule. When we give up our rights, even if it's little by little, we will never get them back. So is that uh, what this is really focused on is ensuring that uh, people have rights to make their own medical decisions? Well, it it is ensuring that. And, And what's interesting about this, Greg, is it's been all along, is that if we're going to create policy as a people to limit people's rights, because the, the law is clear across the country, the federal courts, and et cetera, that sometimes people's individual autonomy must yield to the public good under certain circumstances. That's absolutely true. But what frustrates me to no end, and it's, it's been the way since this country was founded, is that the legislature makes those decisions. Executives don't make those decisions. Administrative agencies don't get to make those decisions, only the executive. And if you read the statute as it exists today, just go read it. That's all people have to do. It says that you can't force somebody to undergo these types of vaccinations and testing to limit the spread of a disease. You cannot force them to do it. They can refuse. And the only remedy for the Department of Health is to isolate or quarantine that person for some amount of time. And so this, the slippery slope that Kim talks about is absolutely right. You're, you know, they're trying to say, well, you don't, you don't have to vaccinate or test. You can refuse. And yeah, if you do, your life gets crushed. So these untenable situations that they're putting them in are absurd. And the governor's mandates, I've had all I can take of the governor's mandates for two years because his executive order in and of itself, just take the executive order, Greg is absolutely unenforceable. There is no mechanism whatsoever that the governor can ever enforce one of his mandates. It's impossible. So what he tries to do is weaponize these administrative agencies that he absolutely controls with an iron fist and tries to coerce them into putting our citizens in these positions that if you don't comply, then we're going to destroy your life. It's absolutely absurd, and, and the people should have enough of it. Tom, just a, a couple of other things here real quick. Um, the the specifics of the case, you do bring up the Health Care Right of Conscience Act. In the past, you've also brought up with uh, cases concerning uh, hospital staff uh, that uh, there's there's a vac, there's a um, uh, influenza vaccine law, but there's no COVID-19 vaccine law. Uh, and you'd indicated if the legislature were to, you know, put their names on votes and, and pass a COVID-19 vaccine law, you'd, you'd probably not have a case in some of these instances. Uh, but you did cite the Health Care Right of Conscience Act. Uh, they recently passed a, a law amending that. Uh, is that going to impact this case at all? Greg, they didn't pass anything. And, that's, and, and I'm glad you asked that question because I had this. I did a presentation to about 500 doctors up north. This ruse that the legislature just went through with Health Care Right of Conscience Act was no more than a resolution. There was nothing passed amending the Health Care Right of Conscience Act. 
if you read what was in that language and they would acknowledge it to you if somebody asked them the question, is all they did is try to pass a resolution that appears to be a bill that says, oh, back in 1998 when the legislature passed this law, they never intended it to cover COVID stuff. And I start laughing when I say it out loud because the le- there's never been a time in our history to where a legislature 23 years later says we're going to pass something that says what they meant back then. Only the people back then know what they meant and the courts interpret what they meant. So what they passed was not an amendment to the Health Care Right of Conscience Act. It absolutely means nothing and has no legal impact on the law uh, for health care right of conscience. None whatsoever. It's meaningless. We're talking with Attorney Thomas DeVore on the WMAY Morning News Feed. Finally here, um, while we were uh, uh, looking to hook up with you, I was reviewing the news out of uh, Tri-City Schools here in Sangamon County that uh, is going doing an adaptive pause. Um, <laughs> the, the State Board of Education tracks schools that don't mandate masks, but they don't track schools that are doing adaptive pause. What do you make of that? There is no – this adaptive pause nonsense is something that the State Board of Education created in guidance. If you read their guidance, which if you read the law, guidance is not enforceable. The law actually says that unless something is adopted through the Administrative Procedures Act, it, doesn't, it has no force and effect. But they created this guidance or this adaptive pause nonsense that gives – They try to give these local school districts the ability to close the school for some amount of time, even though the law says the school has to be open a certain number of days. And only Dr. Ayala herself has some ability to close a school district under certain circumstances. She tries to pawn that off in some guidance as adaptive pause. I mean, the the words that they create, you know, like for guidance and mandate and depth of, it's all ridiculous. But the Tom, district, but Tom, they they don't, tr- but they don't track the school districts that are doing that. They they track no, if, they if, if the school district's not having a mask mandate. I got school districts across this state that have mask mandates in place, Greg, but they're not enforcing them. We've almost become speakeasies of the school districts because they're not enforcing it. And so, yeah, they're tracking it, but they don't really know how many school districts are not uh, forcing the mask. But you're right, with the adaptive pause, they're not paying any attention because as long as the school districts are kind of doing, and let me answer this to you, I'll tell you why. As long as the school districts are doing something that these people agree with, and I got my air quotes going, they don't care to track it. So they'll track schools that aren't enforcing the mass mandate because they want to come after them. But if they're putting adaptive pause in place, they don't care about that. They're not worried about whether that adversely impacts kids' education. Do all the adaptive pause you want because that promotes what we're trying to do, which is to stop the spread of the coronavirus. And again, I'm saying that jokingly because I'm in one of those moods today. That's why they don't track it, Greg, because they don't care about those types of decisions because those types of decisions aren't adverse to their policies. Well, I, I do have the question into why they're not tracking those uh, adaptive pause schools, and we'll see what uh, what they respond with. Tom DeVore, that's all the time we've got. Greatly appreciate you Bye. taking it with us. Take care, sir. Bye. It's the WMAY Morning News Feed, now 655 from Culver's West on Wabash. Give the gift of Culver's this season. Gift cards available.